Campton's Log, Stardate 5101.5. Dominion has been diverted to Space Station K9 in the Canis Sector to pick up a VIP and two accompanying passengers. We were not informed of their identity or their destination. To say all the secrecy has piqued my curiosity would be an understatement. Jason, do you have any idea who this is? No, he or she wanted it to be a complete surprise. Well, it's gotta be somebody with some pull who can engineer a deep space boarding like this. And Starfleet wanted you here in person. Dang. Chief, any idea who this is? Aye, sir, but my lips are sealed. If I told you, I would never hear the end of it. Well, let's not prolong the suspense. If they're ready down there, let's get them aboard. Aye, sir. So you gonna stand there with your mouths open or are you gonna say something? Hook him aboard, Commodore. Dr. Tamara, you're traveling with the Commodore? We are now husband and wife. When did this happen? A week ago on Vulcan. Captain, may I introduce Commander Tanner? She'll be traveling with us. Welcome aboard, Commander Tanner. Thank you, Captain. So, now wait a minute, let me get this straight. You two are married, you're a Commodore again, and by that patch on your chest, you've got a new command. And since I've never seen that before, Starfleet must be keeping this hush-hush. Can't put anything by you, Jason. I'll be able to tell you a little bit about it later over brandy and a cigar. How about 2,300 hours? Sounds good. You got any baggage? Yes, we have some coming along. Do you have any room for us three vagabonds? Of course. Chief, when our baggage gets here, beam it to Captain 501 and 502. Aye, sir. Captain, if you don't mind, I'd like to wait for the baggage. There's some very secure documents I'd like to keep within my reach. Would you like to escort us to our quarters now? I'll tell you about the wedding on the way. Yes, sir. I had to flush them out of the nebula, and assuming they were cowards, I directed them to the opposite direction of where I wanted them to go. Then they just came right to me. You know, I've read the official report so many times. It's really good, though, to hear it from the horse's mouth. I'm proud of you, Jason. Well, you trained me well, sir. Stop the modesty. I'm over that now. Hey, everybody makes mistakes. Don't make you run the Korbayashi Maru simulation for nothing, you know. Don't remind me. Well, how long will you be flying with us? About three days, I believe. We're going out to Outpost 7. Well, I'll get the navigator right on it. That won't be necessary. That's already been taken care of. I'm not used to anybody issuing orders to my crew. I'm sorry. With the cloak and dagger affairs that I'm involved with right now, I had... No, I'm sorry, Commodore. You can command my crew anytime you require. Thank you, Jason, for your understanding. And Sam will be fine while we're in private. Jason, I would like to interview some of your primary bridge crew. Of course, at their convenience. Would that be a possibility? Oh, you're welcome to come to the bridge anytime you want, sir. I'll certainly be up to the bridge at some point in time. It's just that I would like to meet with a few of them individually. I've heard so many good things about them. Of course. Now, if you'll excuse me. Yes, Captain. Go be Captain. So, as I speak, 
my words are translated into sign language, which then in turn are displayed on your heads-up display on your glasses. Yes, sir. There has been no difficulty communicating. The Universal Translator works with sign as easily as with spoken word. Fascinating. You're an inspiration, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. Will that be all? Yes, thank you very much. And when you return to the bridge, could you have him send down Commander John Quincy, please? Yes, sir. Well, sir, I feel my service has been satisfactory. Your service has been exemplary, but always in a way that doesn't draw attention to yourself. You act and react flawlessly, and you fade off into the shadows. Where are you from exactly, Mr. Quincy? Well, sir, I was born on Mars, a little hamlet called... Oh, spare me. We know records were changed and manipulated. We just don't know who and why. I don't know who your people are, Quincy, but we have some pretty clever people of our own in Starfleet. A whole section, and they're involved in a lot of things that I don't believe that you could comprehend. You may be surprised, Colin. Oh, all right. All right, Commodore. You got me dead to rights. I'm ready to go to the slammer, see? The big house, the joint, the Huskow, the concrete country club. I did it, and I'd do it again, see? I am not here to take you in. I'm actually here to ask you for help. Commodore, I am a hard man to surprise. But you've managed to do just that. How may I be a service? I've heard you're very perceptive. You seem to know things, things that would be hard to explain without the knowledge of interdimensional or temporal displacement. Oh, I loathe time travel. So it's true? Yeah, you're correct. I am not from Mars. I'm from nowhere in particular. I come from a very ancient race of people. We are essentially non-corporeal. We can become corporeal when the mood strikes us. Time, space, reality itself are a mere putty in our hands. But not to worry. You and your people are safe for the time being. So now, how can I help you? Well, I'm sure you know about my incident a few years ago. Yes, you were answering a distress call, and you were ambushed. It's commonly referred to as the Cromwell Nebula Incident. Chamberlain, take the helm. Sir. Initiating evasive maneuvers, sir. Engineering damage report. Work drive is gone. All I can get you is half impulse. O'Brien, full phaser spread. Yes, sir, we have no target. Fire randomly until you hit something or the phasers melt down. Aye, sir. That was a tough couple of years for you, sir. Mr. Quincy, you have a way of understatement. What I need to know, what I want to know, is what would have happened if I had anticipated that ambush? Not a guess, not some algorithm, 
But can you do that? Would you do that? Certainly. Why not? But know this. Captain Brousseau handled the situation the way he did because of your previous experience. If he had been the one to answer the distress call first, the situation would have ended up the same, with the same results. You did nothing wrong. Obviously, you would not have been ambushed. Don Chamberlain and 16 others would not have been killed in action or missing. I am sorry. I know this is hard for you to hear. No. I asked for this. Please continue. Well, Don Chamberlain would have remained your XO, and you and he would have remained fast friends. Jason Brousseau would have stayed on as executive officer aboard the Lexington and moved up in rank to captain as soon as Commodore Wesley had retired. Denson would have remained your loyal chief engineer. By the by, Captain Brousseau and his new chief communications officer make quite the pair. They don't know it yet, but they're going to have a very long and happy relationship. Are you saying that if I hadn't left, they would never have met? Well, I can see Miss Tompkins making her way to the Lexington. They would have met after all. But I digress. This was supposed to be how your life would have changed. Well, let's see, what else? A while back, Captain Brousseau recovered an ancient crown from Simon Licata. Now that would have been you, and you would have handled it flawlessly, as he did. As you were. This is Simon Licarda, a known scoundrel and an associate of Harry Mudd. Harry Mudd? You know him? Only by reputation. Why am I not surprised? Licarda is holding an auction. We have managed to get tickets to the auction. Now, Licarda does not know the participants, all he knows is that they're Romulan. Commodore, I don't have the ears for this mission. Oh, you certainly will have the ears. As soon as this session is over, you're headed down to surgery. It is a painless procedure. Mostly. What are we doing at this auction, Commodore? We're going to this auction to locate a Romulan crown that was stolen centuries ago. Do we have any images of it? No, we don't have any images of it. However, being an amateur Romulan historian, I felt that you would be a great asset to the team to possibly locate it. So wait a minute, are we bidding on this crown? Mm, not exactly. You're beginning to see a pattern forming here, right? Well, I bet you didn't see this coming. Two months ago, Professor Lawton at Starfleet Academy came down with a rather severe case of the Tellurite virus. Very sad indeed. His death was horrible. You mean he wouldn't have died if... Oh no. His death had nothing to do with you. That would have still happened. But after traveling to Earth for his funeral, you would have decided to stay there and take on his responsibilities. You were the perfect choice, really. Oh, another thing. Your promotion to Admiral would be in the works right about now. So after a long way around, I would have ended up pretty much where I am now. Call it fate. Call it karma. These things have a way of course correcting themselves. Like a pack of hungry targs. Sir? You can lose them for a while but they always seem to find you again. Yes, I suppose so. Admiral. Yes? I've done what you've asked, but I cannot allow you to remember this. It's not healthy for you, or the timeline for that matter. Please, I, 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 I need it. I... It'll always be there, in your head, buried deeply. You won't remember the details, but it'll still have the same soothing effect. But Quincy, I... 
I... Yes, Commodore? I... I, I forgot what I was going to say. However, I do feel a lot better. Good. Now I'll be excused, sir. Yes, you most certainly can be, and uh, I, I hope to see you on the bridge later. Yes, sir, and it was a pleasure. Thank you. Helm, ETA to Outpost 7. 23 hours, 14 minutes, sir. Captain, should I head down to the Commodore's quarters? No, I think he's about done with interviews today. Aye, sir. Captain, incoming message from the USS Republic on an open channel. It's the Fleet Admiral. On screen. Admiral, what can I do for you? Thank you. Good morning, Captain. Actually, I have some good news for one of your bridge officers, Commander Denson. Admiral Parmley, how are you doing? More importantly, how's my daughter doing? You get right to the point, don't you, Denson? I liked it about you. So I'll get right to the point myself. Your daughter has just given birth to a healthy baby boy, and she wants you to come see him as soon as she possibly can. My son would like to see you as well. I'll be there within a few weeks. See that you do. And Jason? Yes, sir. On a completely unrelated note, I want you to promote Commander Denson to Captain of Engineering, effective immediately. It will be my pleasure, sir. Well then, I suppose I've imposed on Captain St. James Long. Thank you for the use of your center chair, sir. Good day, gentlemen. Palm me out. Commodore, I didn't know you were coming up to the bridge tonight. I would have put a little more spit and polish on everything. We weren't coming to the bridge. We were on our way to dinner when he decided to make a detour. I told him it was illogical, but have you ever tried to talk him out of anything? I knew better, Doctor. Sir, would you like to take the con, even for just a moment? I don't think I'd be. I've made a few improvements. It's very comfortable. Oh, sure, okay, I'd be more than happy to. Okay, thank you, get back to work now. Jason, where's Don? I think it's his meal time. I know he'll be around soon. He's excited to see you. Captain. Unusual signal, 323 kilometers off the port bow, sir. Navigator, set course for... Oh, <laughs> pardon me, Captain. I Old habits die hard. You have the time. Think nothing of it, Commodore. It was a treat to see you in the center seat. Helm. Then, of course, the intercept. Come, husband. Some nourishment will do you good. You're exhausted. Get some rest. Dr. Farrell has offered the tour of medical, and I cannot refuse that. No, you can't refuse that. You have an interesting time. Surprise! Chamberlain, I ought to throw you into the brig. Is that any way to treat a Commodore? Sir, sir, please, please, I, I didn't mean, I really didn't. <laughs> you still haven't learned how to come into a room, have you? You old dog, I oughta. Turnabout is fair play and that's the fun of that. 
I've never been happier to see somebody as I am right now. Uh, the feeling is mutual. You know, the last time we talked, you were trying to talk me out of that access way in the starboard in the cell. She saved the ship that day, Don. Don, get out of there. The well, breached. I couldn't repair it. The nacelle that you're in is losing structural integrity. The emergency bulkheads are about to close. Get out of there now. Negative, sir. Failure is imminent. Open the hatch, Don. That is an order, Don. With all due respect, sir. Thanks for the many. How are the needs of the... But enough of that. How about a bite to eat? Couldn't eat a bit more. I've already been to the officer's mess. Well then, how about we find us some glasses? Hmm, I think that would be a wonderful idea. I have some glasses right over here. What shall we drink to? To the Dominion. <laughs> to the Harrison. What else? To being hard to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Commodore, just in time. I got a treat for you. I left the Dominion five years ago, deeply troubled, haunted by the past and dreading the future. But with Tamaro's help, I began to slowly heal. When I was transported aboard three days ago, the past came flooding back. It took me a moment to realize that the Dominion was no longer my ship. This was no longer my crew. But then suddenly I felt at peace. Looking around, I see one of the best crews in Starfleet. I am proud of what they have accomplished, what they've become. They will always be close to my heart. I've reached a crossroads though, a new command. The USS Harrison, a prototype of things to come. This ship and specialized crew will be completely different from anything I've experienced. This challenge I am up for, this challenge I am eager to take up. As to Dominion, this is not goodbye, for we shall meet again, fair winds and a following sea.